Hey, what is happening? This is Clyde and I have pressing issues. I'm coming to you from my dry cleaners when I go over comic books and other geeky stuff. And today's just kind of a little bit of a brag post. I'm just going to show off some of the books that uh, I have. Um, some cool stuff, nothing too spectacular, but uh, a nice collection from mostly from my uh, days collecting as a youth in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, and a couple other newer books. But um, just a few slabs. I think I have 14 and uh, some other other books that uh, I just thought were pretty cool that I might be graded later um, and just decide what, what I'm going to do with them. I'm kind of, if you're not going to sell the books, I'm not going to be pushing, I, I'm the type of person that's like, collect how you want to collect. So if you're not going to be selling the books, sometimes it's, if you're grading may not be the best bet for you because the cost to grade, including pressing and cleaning and um, shipping and everything could be upwards 40, depending on how many books you do at a time. Forty dollars per book. It's it's not it's not inexpensive, and there's ways uh, a lot of ways to preserve your books um, for a lot cheaper, and also get to keep them because the grading process does take right now, including pressing, can take upwards of six months. So um, just keep your options out there so you can decide what you want to do. Uh, but let me get move on to my books and uh, let's start here. Let's see, this is my first book. This is. Amazing Spider-Man number 361. It's the first appearance of Carnage. You might have seen this in my other uh, video, my unboxing video. Uh, this is a book I had as I picked up as a kid. Unfortunately, um, I probably got sloppy and bit the corner over here when I was putting it in the bag. So this is my lowest graded slab at 8.5, which is still a pretty great grade. Uh, so it's a uh, you know it's nothing to, nothing to sneeze at. Um, but uh, very happy with that book, and you know, outside of this corner, it's really in great shape. All right, and this one next is probably my biggest book that I have. This is Amazing Spider-Man uh, number three hundred. This is the first appearance of Venom, uh, first full appearance. There's a lot of uh, kind of people arguing about with cameos and so forth because he does show up in two ninety nine. But you know, this is one most collectors really want. It's a very common book. This is also a uh, newsstand version, which you can sell from seeing this UPC uh, in the corner, which is makes it a little bit more rare and uh, more sought after. At 9.0, still a great book. Um, all right, and up next, we have Amazing Spider-Man 238. This is the first appearance of Hobgoblin. Uh, again, this book came from early 80s, I think, 1983. And um, this is uh, it's also a hard book to get in high grade because they had tattoos that came with the book, which people, you know, kids want to play with the tattoos, put them on. So a lot of times the tattoos are removed from the from the book, and when this when you have that, then the book's now incomplete. So uh, it's hard to get a high grade. And here's one of my favorite covers. This is Amazing Spider-Man 316, first cover appearance, full cover appearance of Venom. Uh, 315 also has them on there, but uh, this one is just, that one's in a little window. This is a full cover appearance that's often uh, homaged and used in other covers. But um, great Todd McFarlane work. Um, probably that it's the second appearance of Venom, so this, as 300 gets out of reach, this one kind of is becoming more popular. Up oh, next, I have two two copies of Amazing Spider-Man uh, number four. I think this is volume three. Um, this is the first appearance of Cindy Moon as Silk. Um, so this is a pretty hot book. Silk is on the rise. She may or may not be getting a TV or a movie, but she's still a hot up-and-coming character. So looking forward to seeing more stuff from her. Up next, I have New Mutants 87, which is, uh, this is the first appearance of uh, I believe Cable, and uh, this is, Todd McFarlane helped with the cover, was Rob Liefeld's first work with uh, the title, and, um, you know, definitely, looking back, I kind of made fun of somebody, but it posted it, so he had a signed issue, signed by Todd McFarlane, I was like, why, why are you trying to get a New Mutants signed by Todd McFarlane, but I didn't realize he helped with the cover. I guess you live and learn. 
more topic from the goodness. This is Incredible Hulk 340, the second battle between Hulk and Wolverine. Uh, again, great Todd McFarlane and the reflection in uh, Wolverine's uh, knives in his uh, claws. You see the reflection of the Hulk, which is just spectacular. All right. Moving on to, this is probably a lesser known title, but people may have heard of it now because it was a TV show that was on Netflix a couple, about a year and a half ago. It's Lock and Key number one. This is a small run. I think there was only about less than 6,000 issues initially. This is by Joe Hill, who is Stephen King's son. I guess he uh, changed his name, so he was trying to that reverse nepotism, so he didn't uh, get... Uh, he wanted to do it on his own, so he, he wasn't trying to ride on his dad's coattails. Now moving on to, this is this is a book that I thought was pretty awesome. This is um, Old Man Logan, number one. This is a the hip-hop variant uh, homage to um, Ice Cube's album Death Certificate, which is a spectacular album, one of my favorite albums when I was in college. And uh, this is a great uh, homage to that. I have a few other uh, hip hop variant homage covers that I'll be showing a little bit later. Uh, this one's also signed by the artist of the of the, uh, of the of the book. This is Tim Broadstreet, who has signed it on the bottom. Up next, I have New Mutants uh, 98, which is the first appearance of Deadpool, and a uh, copycat who's pretending to be Domino uh, and Gideon. But uh, Deadpool's the one everyone cares about, really. So, all right. Moving on, we have the Omega Men number three, first appearance of Lobo. Um, this is another big first appearance. Uh, this was really hot in the early 90s where Lobo had his own title, and I think he's kind of maybe coming back to the forefront at some point. I was really surprised when I got this back in the 98. Uh, very happy with that book. And this is Ultimate Fallout 4, the second appearance, the second print, excuse me. This is the uh, first appearance of Miles Morales, which uh, in the second print you can tell because in the first print, the top of his head is cut off by that black box and also his face is in shadow so you don't see what Spider-Man looks like. So this is the first time his face is shown uh, also in the Sarah Pacelli version. She, it's more of a just a headshot of him removing his mask. I think it was an interior picture of, in the book. And my last slab is Uncanny X Men 266, the first appearance of Gambit. Uh, nice book. Very happy to get this. Going through the slabs now. Let's go through some other books I think are just pretty cool. Um, just whatever interest. Uh, Either they're good stories or just whatever I thought was pretty good reason to show them off. Um, this here is uh, Thor. Uh, let's see, the God of Thunder issue two. This is the uh, first appearance of Gore the God Butcher, which is going to be upcoming in a uh, the new Thor movie, Thor 4. I don't know the title of it right now, but if I can remember, I'll go ahead and print it on the... Uh, Put it in the comments but uh this is first appearance of gore the god butcher i got this this as a gift from a friend of mine uh, who gave me a stack of comics which i had this one and this one here too this is uh issue uh god of thunder number six which is the first appearance of null who is right now in the king in black it's a very important part of the story so thank you very much um to, to chris who gave me these books uh, moving on to one of our more iconic current covers. This is Amazing Spider-Man number five, uh, 55, which is Patrick Gleason's Webhead cover, which is pretty simplistic but unique and just, just a great, just a beautiful cover. Um, very happy to have it. And, uh, you know, it was just really nice and really neat look. All right. And then we talked about other... Uh, hip hop variants. Here's a couple of the ones I thought were really cool. And most of the time when I pick these up, this is because I'm looking, I was a fan of the original album. So it's re really the ones I picked up. There's literally, I think, about 100 different uh, hip hop variants. This is uh, 
Black Panther, which is a homage to Jay-Z's The Black Album. Very, it's a gorgeous cover. Really simple. And this is an homage to the Notorious B.I.G. Ready to Die. This is, yeah, Astonishing Ant-Man, Ready to Shrink. So, great cover. Um, I have a, my brother gave me a t-shirt which has the B.I.G. Uh, Biggie cover on it. So, it's a... Uh, I don't know if, I think it's just a baby sitting there in a diaper. I don't think it's Biggie himself, but I'm not really sure. Another great homage, this is Howard the Duck, which is an homage to, um, this is uh, Old Dirty Bastards uh, album. The, uh, what was it, Enter? I can't remember the title. But um, this is a uh, Old Dirty Bastard homage, great, great cover. I think it's got a first appearance too of um, of Gwynpool, maybe. Not one hundred percent sure. And here's the Guardians of the Galaxy number one, which is an homage to Far Side's Bizarre Ride to the Far Side, one of my favorite albums back in college. Uh, fantastic album. So. I had to get that one. This is the Unworthy Thor, number one, which is homage to De La Soul's album, their second album, De La Soul's Dead. Again, a great homage, very subtle. Uh, the, the De La Soul album has a broken flower pot. They were trying to change their image after the first um, album because I think people were considering them too soft, too hippie. So they just said, okay, we're gonna break that. You know, We're not flower child. Flower children, we're just beyond that. Moving on to Amazing Spider Man, uh, Marvel team up Spider Man Daredevil. This is uh, 141, which is the sec tied for the first appearance of the black costume, which uh, ties with Amazing Spider Man 252, which I also have, but I didn't, I don't think I brought that so. This is uh, Star Wars Canon, uh, I guess, Canon, Last Padawan, which is the uh, number six, which is the first appearance. I'm sorry, this is number one, excuse me. It's got a first cameo appearance of uh, Ezra Bridger. Um, who, this reason I got this is because my son's name Ezra, so I thought it'd be really cool to have the comic that Ezra's really big in the Clone Wars story. So uh, uh, there's a couple other key appearances here, but um, Ezra was the reason I got it. And here's the uh, Ultimate Comics all-new Spider-Man number one, which is the second appearance of uh, Miles Morales. It also is the origin story of him. Uh, to be honest, it's a better story than the Ultimate Fallout, which is about four pages in that one. This one's obviously more lengthy, and it's a gr good story to have. Um, you know, it's not nearly worth as, as valuable as the other issue, but uh, again, this is a, a great, great book to have. And this is Captain Marvel 17. I think this is volume six, maybe. Well, it is a lot of volumes of Captain Marvel, but this is a first cameo appearance of Kamala Khan, which um, she's, you know, she becomes Miss Marvel later. So the the second print has her on the cover, which is very valuable. This one's not nearly as much so, but it's a pretty cool book to have. And the last book I'm showing off is Uncanny X Men one four uh, one twenty nine, excuse me, which is the first appearance of Kitty Pride and Emma Frost. It's also signed by um, Chris Claremont. Uh, it's in okay shape. It's like a mid grade. It's got a big crease that runs from here to here which probably keeps me from wanting to grade it, but you know, it's kind of a cool book to have. So I think at one point it might become a, as, as Kitty Pryde or Emma Frost becomes more important and if they come up in the MCU, then they'll become a, it's also a Hellfire Club is uh, prominent in this book. So I'm um, looking forward, maybe, maybe bigger things to come for this book. So, but um, that's basically it. That's a uh, well, basic from, one of my little bit of my collection I have a lot of books so I'm hoping maybe I'll show off some more at some other points and uh, so thank you for your time 
if you want to like my video, please like it, uh, subscribe, and I uh, will occasionally put out content when I um, do my pre-grades for and any unboxings I have. Uh, I will try to post it up here just so we can practice our grading and just try to show off and I won't flood you with too much stuff. It's uh, a lot of cool content on the on YouTubes and um, you know, just, just adding a little bit more and I hope you guys had a good time and uh, you want to hit the bell and I'll keep you posted when things come out. So thank you very much. TTFN. Ta-ta for now.